Nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas, has a long history of medical use. Beyond that, people also consume nitrous oxide in a recreational setting, most often using what are called whippets or crackers, typically used for the production of whipped cream. But instead of producing whipped cream, people inhale the contents of these uh, capsules. Now, generally nitrous oxide is considered to be relatively safe, but there are particular risks involved with the use of these so-called food grade uh, crackers or whippets. And that is precisely the topic of today's video. So stay tuned for some interesting insights. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala. I'm a neuropharmacologist studying the mechanisms of drug action in the brain. It's been a while since my last video because I've been pretty busy with a lot of other stuff, including actual research, but I'm slowly trying to get back to my regular schedule of producing uh, more neuropharmacology content for you to see. So bear with me. Now, the topic of today's video is nitrous oxide, a gaseous anesthetic drug that's somewhat similar to ketamine, also blocks the so-called NMDA receptors, which are receptors for the excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate. This receptor blockade results in various effects, most importantly dissociation. Nitrous oxide and ketamine both are classified as dissociative anesthetics and are generally used in analgesia and anesthesia in the medical setting. For more information about dissociation, you can check out my video on ketamine and its dissociative effects. Nitrous oxide itself is generally considered to be pretty safe. It is commonly used in procedural sedation, during minor surgical or dental operations and to help women with labor pains. The most severe risks are related to the ability of nitrous oxide to induce vitamin B12 deficiency, which can lead to several complications, most importantly nerve damage. This rarely happens in a medical setting, but poses a real risk for those who chronically abuse nitrous oxide. While medical professionals use very pure nitrous oxide combined with you know, medical grade oxygen, recreational users often source their nitrous oxide from these so-called whippets or crackers. These small metal cylinders are meant for the production of whipped cream with the help of a whipping siphon. Instead of making a creamy cake topping, people tend to release the gas from the siphon into balloons or directly inhale the gas from the nozzle of the siphon. And there are several risks associated with the use of whippets, which I will go through next. First of all, I want to point out the obvious. Inhaling 100% pure nitrous oxide will eventually lead to unconsciousness that might then lead to falls and injuries. If you are inhaling the gas from a balloon and you lose consciousness, you will most likely resume breathing within a reasonable time frame. However, if you are wearing a mask with a continuous flow of 100% nitrous oxide or have your you know, head in a bag of some sort, that will eventually lead to suffocation and death. This is extremely reckless and should never be done. Second, whipped cream canisters are not meant for inhalation. Already in 2013, when I was still a student of pharmacy, we did a small study with a friend of mine for the Pharmacy Student magazine regarding the impurities of nitrous oxide whippets. After releasing a lot of whippets into the siphon and utilizing a filter at the nozzle, we were able to determine that the whippets leave behind an oily black residue. Under the microscope, we could also observe a, a number of fine metallic particles. Just recently, a proper scientific study was published where whippet contaminants from three different brands of nitrous oxide whippets were examined with a number of analytical techniques. 
The study found that the whippets contained a chemical called cyclohexyl isothiocyanate at a maximum concentration of 67 micrograms per whippet. In addition, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry and optical emission spectrometry revealed the presence of mainly iron and zinc, but also traces of aluminum, chromium, cobalt, nickel and lead. Scanning electron microscopy combined with energy dispersive X-ray spectroscopy confirmed the presence of nano-sized particles containing iron and zinc. Importantly, when the authors simulated inhalation, they could confirm that these nano-sized particles can reach the deeper parts of the lungs, and this is obviously not good news for anyone who uses nitrous oxide whippets recreationally. The chemical found in the capsules, cyclohexyl isothiocyanate, is also classified as a skin and respiratory sensitizer, and at least based on the hazard labeling, I would not want to get this substance into my lungs. Of course, when evaluating the real-life risks of inhaling nitrous oxide whippets, one must take into account the relatively small amount of impurities present in these uh, capsules. Then again, recreational users have been reported to consume over 60 whippets in a day, which can lead to a total respirable dose of around 1.14 milligrams of iron and 1.38 milligrams of zinc nanoparticles. However, it is important to note that these kinds of values represent the worst case scenario, what could be potentially inhaled and actually reach the lungs in heavy use. As the authors point out, to put the respirable doses into perspective, they can be compared with the limit values set for workers, which are around 50 mg of iron and 1 mg of zinc. This suggests that iron-induced adverse effects are unlikely. However, zinc particles are more prone to causing alveolar damage. Indeed, there is a case report of diffuse alveolar damage in a 27-year-old woman who used up to 30 whippets in a day for several weeks. Ultimately, further research is needed to truly understand the health risks involved for using these nitrous oxide containing whippets. But the results do suggest that there may be risks associated with the use of these uh, whipped cream chargers. And the risks are caused by both the chemical impurities contained in the capsules as well as these uh, small amounts of metal particles, particularly iron and zinc, that you can then inhale deep into your lungs. If you have occasionally inhaled a capsule or two of these whippets, then you are unlikely to be at any serious risk. However, if you consume tens of capsules a day for many weeks or maybe even months, then there is a concern that you could be really doing damage to your lungs, but also you could be uh, causing nerve damage through the depletion of vitamin B12. So be very careful. That's all for today. Please remember to press like and subscribe to my channel for future neuropharmacology content. Thank you for watching and until next time.